everybody welcome to the game of the week for the first time we are into September and we're at Royal Stadium in Kansas City for the game between the Kansas City Royals and the New York Yankees and let's look at the updated standings in both the National and American League first for the National League not much of a pennant race especially in the West there is no pennant race in the West in the East Montreal leads Chicago by four and a half, Pittsburgh by seven. Cardinals pretty much out of it, ten and a half back. Game of the week next week will be Montreal at Chicago. That'll be the game of the week on next Saturday, Saturday the 11th. In the American League, Boston, despite getting beaten by California last week, has rebounded, and they now lead the Yankees by half a game. Milwaukee a game and a half back, Baltimore two and a half back. So a nice tight four-team race there. In the West, the White Sox are starting to open up a little bit of ground on California and Kansas City, holding a three-and-a-half game lead over California and five-and-a-half over the Kansas City Royals. Now the game of the week on the 18th will be the Yankees and Milwaukee. Yankees at Milwaukee. And then the game on the 25th will be Baltimore at Milwaukee. So going to be mainly in the AL East and we haven't seen much of the Brewers this year, despite the fact that they were the World Series representation for the American League. So this is the time of the year we're going to start seeing the Brewers because we're down to crunch time. All right, so let's move the standings out of the way. And get this party started, so to speak. Starting pitchers for today's game. Two lefties. Larry Gura is on the mound for the Royals. And Shane Raleigh for the Yankees. Gura 18 and 12, 4.03 ERA. Raleigh 11 and 10, 4.06. So very, very similar. The Yankees won this game in real life 3 to 2. Let's look at the starting lineups. First for the visiting New York Yankees. And let's make sure we've got everything where it needs to be. Okay. All right. For the Yankees, leading off will be Willie Randolph, Mazzilli's at first, Griffey's in right, Winfield's in left, Pinella the DH, Mumphrey in center, Roy Smalley at third, Cerrone catching, and Andre Robertson at short. For the Royals, Willie Wilson in center, UL Washington at short. George Brett is in left field today. Very rare, but he did play some left field in 1982, and this is one of those games. Hal McRae the DH, John Wathen at catcher, Frank White at second, Jerry Martin Second uh, in right field, Willie Akins at first base and Greg Pryor at third. Ballpark effects, singles 1 to 16 for both lefties and righties. Home runs, there is a pretty much a discrepancy, although Kaufman slash Royal Stadium was a symmetrical ballpark. Stratomatic has rated the lefties to hit home runs better. They're a 1 to an 11, where righties are only a 1 to 2. One thing I also did was put in the pitcher hold and catcher throwing arm uh, factors so we can see right away I don't have to take the time to calculate it each time there's a stolen base chance so for the Yankees Shane Raleigh has a minus one because his hold rating is a minus one and Cerrone's a zero so minus one for Raleigh Gura's a minus four you got Wathen who's a minus one and Raleigh I'm, I'm sorry Gura's a minus three so they got to combine minus four so that may keep the Yankees base runners from trying to attempt at certain points possibly with that hold rating since it's Kansas City Royals we got the blue dice for the Royals so they are all set to go and I believe we're gonna be all set to go in just a second get everything in place got the lineups in place my rule book, just in case I need it, is in place. And Larry Gura will finish up the warm-up tosses for the Royals as he'll be facing Willie Randolph to step into the box. And, of course, the speed ratings are also written to the left of the batters. All right, so game of the week, September the 4th. Probably, I'm, I'm assuming this was Labor Day weekend in 1982. And that's when this is being shown is Labor Day weekend, which again coincides with the 2021 calendar, September the 4th. All right, so we are ready to go. 
Larry Gura facing Willie Randolph. Game of the week is underway from Royal Stadium. That's a 2-6 for Randolph against the lefty. He'll draw a leadoff walk. So leadoff walk, and now right away, Randolph could get a jump, but again, he's got to deal with a minus four hold rating combined, catcher and pitcher. And two, minus two for being held makes him a minus six. So if he, even if he gets a jump, it's only a one to nine. So I think he's going to stay in pat. He, of course, will be held on, but he will not try to steal. And here's Lee Mazzilli, first baseman. Not a very good hit and run guy, so we won't try that. We'll just let him swing away. Dura, the pitch, 2-8, and that's a ground ball, third base B, so it's a fielder's choice. Pryor throws over to Frank White for the force play on Randolph. Mazzilli, the new runner, he definitely will not be trying to steal. He will be held, though. He's dangerous enough to hold. And that'll bring up Ken Griffey, right fielder, against Gura, lefty on lefty. That's a 5-8 against a left-hander. It's a fly ball left field. And George Brett out there puts it away, showing he can tow the leather in left field. Although not rated very well. It's very limited range, not much of an arm, and average on the error rating. All right, here's right, uh, left fielder, rather, Dave Winfield. It's a 1, so it's a wild pitch chance for Gura. It requires a 1 to 5, will be a wild pitch. It's a 9, so no wild pitch there. Here's Gura to Winfield. You get a 3-6 for Winfield. That's a straight-up home run against the lefty. Look at that card for Winfield against left-handers. That column three is a 4-5-6 guaranteed home run, right in big, bold numbers. And there's your 3-5-6, or 3-6, rather. And that is a two-run blast from Dave Winfield. And the Yankees grab a 2-0 lead. And they're trying to put a hurt on the Royals' playoff chances as the White Sox and Angels look on with some enjoyment, although the Red Sox do not look on with enjoyment. Of course, it's early. It's just the first inning. Here's Sweet Lou Pinella, the DH. That's a 6-11, and that's a ballpark home run chance. And the ballpark home run chance is only a 1-2 for right-handers, so that will just be a deep fly out to left, and the inning is over. But the Yankees strike for two in the first on the Dave Winfield homer. The end of half an inning of play here at Coffin slash Royal Stadium. It is the Yankees two and the Royals coming to bat. And lefty Shane Raleigh gets to pitch with a two-run lead. We're facing the speedster Willie Wilson now. Only a minus one hold rating for pitcher and catcher combo. So the Royals will definitely be looking to run if they can get on. Especially a guy like Willie Wilson. All right, so Raleigh to Willie Wilson. Hit a 1-9, and that's a all these hits in column one, he found a ground ball to second. So Randolph will retire Wilson, and there's one away. And here's UL Washington, toothpick in mouth from the right side. 1-9, and that's a ballpark home run chance. He's a switch hitter batting right-handed, so it's, again, a 1-2. to two. That's a 13, so it's just a deep fly to left field. And he did have normal power against lefties, obviously, the fact that he has home runs over here. Not home, not home run power against the right-handers, but when he bats right-handed, he has the power. Here's George Brett again playing left field in this one. 4-8, and that's a strikeout by Shane Raleigh. So Shane Raleigh, a 1-2-3 inning, puts the Royals away. We go to the second. 2-0 in favor of the Bronx Bombers. Larry Gura. Coming back out, we'll be facing switch hitter Jerry Mumphrey from the right side, center fielder. 1-5, and that's a strikeout. So Mumphrey out on strikes. One down for switch hitting shortstop Roy Smalley. 4-8 from the right side. Pops him up to short. Hauled in by UL Washington, two down. And that'll bring up the catcher Rick Cerrone. 6-8 against a right-hander. That's going to be a 1 for a double. Anything else is a single, but that's a 1. So Rick Cerrone, that 5% at a chance at a double, and he found it. So a 2-out double by Cerrone. He will not be held at second base. And here's the shortstop, Andre Robertson. 1 chance for a wild pitch. But that's an 11, so it's blocked over there by John Wathen. So Robertson now facing Gura. 2-11. 2-11 is a ground ball to short. 
and UL Washington takes care of it. And the Yankees are gone in the second. Score remains 2-0 Yankees as we head to the bottom of the second. And don't adjust your camera or anything. The, the picture that I have of Royal Stadium is kind of blurry. Apologize for that. It's the only picture I could get that I had at the time. So I have to make the best of it, I guess. All right, here is Hal McRae, designated hitter, leading things off. And interestingly, in 82, Hal McRae had 46 doubles. I believe that led the league. Pretty sure it did. So Hal McRae can't feel really much anymore, but he can certainly hit 3-5, but not this time. He grounds it to second. Frank White is there. I'm sorry, not Frank White. Uh, Willie Randolph is there, rather. One away, and here's the catcher, John Watham. 4-8, and that's a strikeout. Raleigh baffling the Royals early on. Here's Frank White. 6-8, and he struck him out. So Raleigh has a lot of dots on his card with those strikeouts, but, of course, early in the game, he's not gonna, that's not going to be a problem for him. He retires the Royals in order again. Six up and six down for Shane Raleigh. We go to the top of the third. Still 2-0 Yanks. And we're back at the top of the order. Willie Randolph started the game with a walk. 2-6, and he'll walk again. So another leadoff walk. Again, Randolph will not try to run, but he will be held. And here's Lee Mazzilli. Nothing happening on that. Whoops, the D20 did not go through. Uh, the blue die, they rather, didn't go through. Let's re-roll that again. 5-5, uh, five, five, switch hitter batting right, 5-5, five, five, it's a fly to right. Put away out there by the right fielder, Jerry Martin. One down, here's Ken Griffey. Nothing on the strategy. 4-4, four, four, lefty on lefty, that's a ground ball shortstop X. Shortstop is responsible for holding Randolph, so that's going to take one away from UL and make him a 3. He's going to be a 3 E32. 3 and a 9, probably still going to be okay. 3 and a 9 is a G3, so instead of a G2, had he not been responsible for holding the runner, the G3 makes the runner advance. That's a 6. He's an E32. There is no 6, but it's going to be runner advance instead of a fielder's choice. That's going to be the difference on having to hold the runner. So Randolph will take second base. Two outs. He is going to be in held on second base. And here's Dave Winfield. Had that big home run. They could walk him intentionally. But uh, I guess they're going to go ahead and challenge him again. Dare him to do it again. 2-12. He's going to ground it to third. And Greg Pryor is there to end the inning. So this time they get Winfield. Nothing doing for the Yankees here in the third. Go to the bottom of the third. Still 2-0 Yanks. And Shane Raleigh, who has gone six up and six down, will start the bottom of the order. Jerry Martin, former Philly. Raleigh at 212, and that's a fly to right field. Put away out there by Ken Griffey. One down. Here's Willie Mays Akins. And against the lefty, he's dropped all the way to eighth in the batting order. One four, and that's why he grounds to second. Of course, can't really blame him because nobody else has gotten a hit either, so. Here's Greg Pryor. He's playing third base in place of George Brett, who is now in left field. So interesting alignment there. Raleigh to Pryor. 2-7. And Pryor, a lot of hits in column two, but he grounds to second. Randolph is there. And it's nine up and nine down for Shane Raleigh. He goes through the order once with no issues. We go to the fourth. 2 nothing favor of the Yankees. Gura back out. Both pitchers have fatigue number of seven, so they're definitely good to go as far as fatigue goes for a while. Here's Sweet Lou. Four, seven against the righty. One to three is a single, but that's a 20 or an 11. However, I don't know, it looks like it fell to a 20. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a line out to short. No matter if it was 11 or a 20, that would have been the same result. So Sweet Lou is gone. Here's Jerry Mumphrey. 1-7, and that's a ground ball to short. Easy play for UL. Two down for Roy Smalley. So Gura pitching okay. Just that one mistake pitch to Winfield cost him. 
four seven and that's again a one to three single and that is a three so it will be a base hit for Roy Smalley two out single Smalley will not be held and here is Cerrone nothing going on two seven for Cerrone he flies to center Willie Wilson hauls it in and he's over we go to the bottom of the fourth still two nothing in favor of the Pinstripers. Top of the order for the Royals. Willie Wilson gets their second look at Shane Raleigh. See if that's an improvement for the Royals. 6-12. 6-12 against a right-hander. The ground ball pitcher X. He's a 2-E-8. 2-E-8 for Shane Raleigh. 2 and a 17 is good all day long. E-8 and a 9 for a pitcher. E-8 and a 9. No problems there. Easy play for Shane Raleigh. One away. Brings up UL Washington. Flew to left his first chance. 1-8 for UL. And again, all these hits in column one. He found a pop out to third. So that's two away. And that's going to bring up George Brett. 2 And Brett strikes out. So Shane Raleigh. Still doing it through four innings. It's 2 nothing. Favor the Yanks. We go to the top of the fifth. And before I get going anymore, I'll go ahead now, since we're getting into the middle part of the game, and show you the bench and bullpens for both teams. For the Yankees, out of their bullpen, they have two left-handers available, Rudy May and Dave LaRoche, and they have three right-handers, Roger Erickson, George Frazier and the Goose, Goose Gossett. That's the bullpen that pitchers that are available for the Yankees. Far as their offensive players are concerned, lots of lefties available with the lefty on the mound. They sat a lot of lefties. Greg Nettles, Bobby Mercer, John Mayberry, and Oscar Gamble, all from the left side. Two switch hitters, Dave Collins and Butch Weininger, and right-hander Barry Foote, who had to create his own card because he had such limited at-bats. So those are the benches and bullpens for both teams. Remember, this is September call-up, so they called up a lot of young guys. So if they got carded by Strat, I probably got them here in the lineup. Some marginal guys I didn't bother printing out because I got so many guys here, I don't need to use the extreme marginal guys. All right, so we go to the Royals in their bullpen. They have one lefty in the bullpen, Don Hood. That's it. Right-handers. They have Dave Frost, Mike Armstrong, Bill Castro, and, of course, the quiz, Dan Quisenberry. On the, on the bench, they have several lefties with the lefty on the mound, uh, Shane Raleigh. They have Jamie Quirk, Steve Hammond, and Cesar Geronimo from the left side. From the right side, they have Onyx Concepcion, backup catcher Don Slott, Amos Otis, and Lee May. So there you have the benches and bullpens for both teams so you know who I have available to turn to later in the game. All right, that out of the way, let's go to the top of the fifth. Andre Robertson against Larry Gura. 5'11", right-hander, 5'11". That's a ballpark home run chance. He has weak power against lefties, but home runs is only a one to two. That's an eight, so it doesn't matter anyway. That is going to be a fly out to left field by Andre Robertson. One away, here's Willie Randolph. He's walked twice. 3-5. This time he grounds to short. UL Washington puts it away. Two down. So Gura has settled in, but not getting any run support from his mates. Here's Lee Mazzilli. 2-7 against the lefty. 1-18 is a single. That will work. Two out single for Lee Mazzilli. He will be held, but he won't go anywhere. And here's Ken Griffey. Gura to Griffey. 2-7. Ground ball, second base A, but the left-handed batter means the shortstop's responsible, not the second baseman, so there's no problem there. Frank White was free to make that play with no issues, and the inning is over. So we go to the bottom of the fifth, still 2-0 Yankees. Shane Raleigh coming back out. He'll be facing Hal McRae, John Wathen, and Frank White. McCray grounded the second his first time up. 5-10, and that's a ground ball shortstop X. That is Andre Robertson. 
He's a 3 E29. 3 and a 2, that's going to be a base hit, and there goes the no hitter. 3 and a 2 will definitely be a base hit. And check the E29, that's an 8. That's, I'm sorry, it's a 9. E29 and a 9. So at shortstop, E29, there is no 9, but it will sneak through for a base hit. First hit of the game for the Royals. And it's Hal McRae. He will not be held on. That brings up John Wathen. One chance for a wild pitch. Need a one or a two. And that's a two, so it's a wild pitch. Shane Raleigh uncorks one, moves Hal McRae into scoring position. With nobody out, takes the double play out of the equation. So Raleigh now facing Wathen. That white die did not go through. It stuck to my hand and fell down the the outside of the tower, so I'm going to re-roll this. 6-4 against a right-hander is a walk. So all of a sudden, Royals now have two men on, nobody out, and they're in business. Here's Frank White. He is a B bunter if they want to go that route, but then you're going to the bottom of the order. So I think they're going to have Frank White swing away. Take your chances. Hope he doesn't hit into a double play. 4-11. 11 is a fly ball to center, and that's one away. That brings up the right fielder, Jerry Martin. Raleigh to Martin, nothing happening. We get a 2-7 against the lefty. 1-18 is a single. That's a 3, so it's a base hit. It's only one star, but it's going to load the bases. So the Royals have the bases loaded with one out. And Willie Akins, Willie Mays Akins, is up to the plate. He is a double play candidate. The infield is playing at double play depth. No one's being held on, though. Raleigh to Aikens. 4-8. 4-8. Struck him out. He's not tired, so the strikeout is good. Two down, and it's up to Greg Pryor. Last chance for the Royals to get something done, or else they're going to leave him loaded. Nothing happening on the Havoc. Raleigh to Pryor. 3-12, and that's a ground ball to second plus injury. So Greg Pryor is out, and he might be out of the game on an injury check. So we'll go to the injury chart in the rule book and see how that's going to play out. Turn to our super advanced injury chart. And we're going to roll 1D20. And if it's a 1 to 4, he gets he's okay. 1 to 6, actually he remains in the game. 7 or higher, he's got to come out. That's a 20, so he's got to come out. So what we're going to do have here most likely is just move George Brett to third and bring in a new left fielder. I would that seemed to make the most sense. So let's see who they're going to bring in to play left field. Well, actually, they're going to move Willie Wilson to left field and bring Amos Otis in to play center. So Amos Otis will come in to replace Greg Pryor. He's in center field, a 2, minus 2, and an E1. So he will come in there. Wilson will move from center to left, and George Brett will move to third base. And let's check, redo his ratings as a third baseman. George Brett is a 2E21. So that's what we got going on right there. But the Royals leave him loaded. That's also a big story. Greg Pryor is injured and cannot continue, so he's out. We go to the sixth, 2 nothing. Favor of the Yankees. Gura back out will be facing Dave Winfield, who was accounted for both runs with his two run homer in the first inning. He's also grounded to third. Gura to Winfield, 111, ground ball to first. That's a C, so I'll go ahead and just from what I've heard other people do and make it a 3 1 ground out instead of a 3 unassisted. Since it's a C, we'll do that. Usually I only do it for X chances, but I'll do it for the C chances. Why not? Sweet Lou. 4-4. Four, four. Ground ball shortstop X. That is UL Washington. 2E32. 2 and a 20 is good all day long, but the 14 on the E32 could be a problem. E32 and a 14. Nope, it's a 13 and a 15, but no 14. So UL handles a tough play. Makes it. Over to first in time, and Sweet Lou is gone. Here's Jerry Mumphrey, 0 for 2. 
Gura, 6-7. Switch it to batting right. 6-7 is a ground ball. Second base X, Frank White. Frank White is a 1-E20. So we know he's going to get to it. We don't need the D20. We're checking for an error. That's an 11 on the E20. And there is no error. There's a 13 and 18, 17, but no 11. So good play for Frank White, and the inning is over. So Larry Gura has really picked it up here and pitching well, but that initial two-run homer may be more than what the Royals can overcome, unless they can figure out Shane Raleigh. All right, here's Willie Wilson, top of the order. He is now in left field with all the maneuvering that was done. Raleigh, 5-7 against a switch hitter batting right. 5-7 is a ground ball, second base X. That's Willie Randolph, 2-E-17. 2-13 is good. E-17 and a 10 is no issue at all. So it's a good play for Willie Randolph. And there's one away for UL Washington. So UL stepping to the plate. 6-5, switch hitter batting right. That's an in-home run chance of a 1. That is a 1. UL does have normal power against righty. I'm sorry, against lefties. So that 1 is a home run. How about that? UL Washington, a 5% chance for a home run, and he found it. UL Washington, not known for his power. He only hit 10 home runs all season, but there's one right there against the lefty, and he did it. Cuts the lead to 2-1, to one, gets the Royals on the scoreboard, and now third baseman George Brett, who's now playing third base, he's up 4-5, and that's a strikeout. So Raleigh gets Brett. Brett has the hat trick now. He struck out all three times. So maybe playing left field might have got to him. I don't know, but maybe it threw him off out of sync. Here's Hal McRae. 4-12 against a right-hander. Split chance. 13 is a liner to short. So that's going to end the inning. But the Royals do break through on the scoreboard. After six complete, it's Yankees 2 and Royals 1. And we go to... Roy Smalley. And this is the top of the seventh, so fatigue inning for both pitchers will begin. It'll be Smalley, Cerrone, and Robertson do up against Larry Gura, who has been in control ever since giving up that home run. He's been in pretty much control the rest of the way. 3-7, and that's a walk. As soon as I say that, he starts walking, guys. So a leadoff walk to Smalley. Smalley will not be held. Here's Cerrone. He's not a very good bunter. He's only a C bunter. So I think they're going to have him swing away. Plus, you got Robertson behind him. So may as well let Cerrone have a hack at it. 6-8, and a good hack he has. One's a double, two to 20 is a single two stars. That's a single two stars. Puts runners on the corners with nobody out. And now the Kansas City bullpen is loosening as... It appears to be right-hander Mike Armstrong is in the bullpen. Loosening, trying to get loose and get ready. That'll bring up Andre Robertson. This is a perfect time for him to try to bunt. He is a C bunter, but he would turn to a D bunter. So I don't know if you want to have him bunt here, but I guess that, that that's what the protocol calls for is a bunt. Even though he's a D bunter, they're going to give him a shot. See if he can get it down. So we'll see how he does as a D bunter. That's a four. A D bunter and a four is a good sacrifice. The white die being a four is the first baseman. So it will go to Willie Akins. He'll just tag him coming in, sacrifice three unassisted. And Robertson, despite that, gets the job done. Now, runner on third had to hold. They were just sacrificing the runner to second, is all they were doing. So that puts runners at second and third with one out and it brings up Willie Randolph in the top of the order. Now Gura, do you let Gura pitch to Randolph or do you bring in Armstrong to face Randolph? I think with a veteran Gura, he's not tired yet, you stick with him. Infield is in though for the Royals. They can't afford to give up a cheap run. They gotta, they gotta cut the run off. Gura 1-8, but that's not gonna happen. That is a three run homer by Willie Randolph a three-run shot for Willie Randolph on that 1-8 result. That's a 1-7 to seven home run. That's a three. It is gone. Willie Randolph just blew this game open with a three-run homer. 
and perhaps they went with Larry Gurra one batter too many. But a three-run shot, the gopher ball gets Gurra again and is now five to one Royals. And that's going to be it for Larry Gurra. He is out of there. Mike Armstrong will now be the new pitcher. And on the 82 season, he was 5-5, five 3-2-0 five, ERA, and 6 saves. So he is on to pitch to face the switch hitting Lee Mazzilli. So Armstrong is in. And we'll calculate his hold rating, which is a plus 1 to go with the minus 1 from Wathen. So it's a net 0. Not that the Yankees want to steal right now up 5-1, to one, but... To get to that, at least we got it figured out. So one out, base is clear, three runs are in. Here's Lee Mazzilli. We'll now turn around and bat left-handed. 5-10, that's a ground ball, third base X. So now that's going to be George Brett. It's the newly moved over to third base George Brett. 2 E21. 2 and a 4. Should be okay. 2 and a 4 is a G3, so he does get to it. That is a 12 and an E21. For third baseman, there's an 11, but no 12. So George Brett does make the play. Two away. That brings up Ken Griffey. Two outs base is clear for Ken Griffey. That's a 4-6 against a lefty. And it's a pop-up to first. Aikens puts it away. Damage done, though. Three runs for the Yankees. We go to the seventh inning stretch. It is New York 5 and the Royals 1. And I'm going to stretch myself and get ready for these last couple of innings. Shane Raleigh will start the seventh inning. This will be his fatigue inning as well. John Wathen is going to be your leadoff man. And I've already gone through the bullpen and benches for both teams. They know who's available if the Royals decide to possibly pinch hit or whatever. We'll go from here. And of course the Yankees have guys in their bullpen that they certainly would be bringing out very shortly if Raleigh starts to tire. They do have George Frazier, and actually George Frazier is light tossing in the bullpen just in case. So George Frazier, the righty, is loosening. James John Wathen, he's going to lead it off. He's struck out and he's walked. That's a 5-5, five, five, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop X. That is Andre Robertson, a 3 E29. 3 and 18 is good, E29 and an 8. E29, there is no 8. It's a good play for Andre Robertson. He makes the play. Brings up Frank White. 2-8 against the lefty. 1-8 is a home run, but that's a 14, so it will still be a double. So Frank White can't get the homer, but he does get a one-out double. Tries to get something started for the Royals. That will bring up Jerry Martin. Nothing on the havoc. Here's Martin. He's one for two. That's a 6-6. Six, six. That's a right-hander. Look at this. One to five is a triple. That's a four. It is a triple for Jerry Martin. So a double followed now by a triple. Plates a run. Cuts the lead to five to two. So back come the Royals. And we will get a pinch hitter for Willie Akins. Willie Akins will be called back. And Lee May, powerful right-handed hitter Lee May, will come in. And he'll stay in the game to play first base as well. Not a very good first baseman, but neither is Aiken. So go from 4E9 to 4E15. But Lee May is on. Infield for the Yankees is back. They'll give up the run to get the out since they still hold a three-run lead. So here's Lee May stepping in against Raleigh. And George Frazier is almost ready. Nothing on the... Oh, it's a two, so we got a chance for a balk or a pass ball. Chance for a pass ball on the catcher, Cerrone. His pass ball rating's a six. Fifteen, though, he is able to block it. So now Lee May against Raleigh. One eleven, Ground ball first base C. That'll get the run home. As the first baseman, Mazzilli, takes the bag himself, but the run does score. Jerry Martin comes across the plate. RBI ground out. It is now 5-3. to three. Two outs and the base is clear for Amos Otis. Otis, my man. They're going to stick with Raleigh since, since the bases are clear. They'll go ahead and stick with Raleigh against Otis. 2-9, and that's a ground ball to short to end the inning. 
So two runs come in for the Royals. There's a profitable seventh inning for both teams as Yankees pick up three and the Royals pick up two. We go to the eighth, it's 5-3. And let's see, Armstrong will stay in the game. He only faced two batters in the seventh, so and he got them both out. So he's going to stay in there to face Dave Winfield. It'll be Winfield, Pinella, and Mumphrey for the Yankees here in the eighth. They lead it 5-3. to three. Winfield, one for three, that big two-run homer in the first. 2-7, and he's going to ground it to short. UL Washington right there, one away. It's going to bring up Lou Pinella, Sweet Lou. 0 for 3 for Sweet Lou. 3-7, and that's a single. So Sweet Lou finally gets on the hit parade with a one-out single. He will not be held. And that brings up Jerry Mumphrey. Nothing on the Havoc. 4-3 against a lefty is a fly ball right field X. Right fielder Jerry Martin, he's a 2-8. 2 and 18 is good. The error one could be trouble. He's an E-8, and that is a 13. E-8, there's a 15 and a 17, a 16 and an 18, but no 13. So Jerry Martin hauls it in, two down, for the shortstop Roy Smalley. One, chance for a wild pitch. That's a 20, so he gets back. He blocks it, I should say. Does Wathen, keep, prevents the wild pitch. Here's Smalley. 3-8 for Smalley. Struck him out. So Mike Armstrong does well in relief. He goes inning and two-thirds without giving up anything. And he very well could pitch the ninth. We'll see. We go to the top of the, uh, bottom of the eighth, rather. And that's going to be it for Shane Raleigh, I do believe. I think they're going to cap him at seven innings. And we will get a new pitcher for the Yankees. And coming in for the Yankees will be George Frazier. And Frazier on the 82 season. Four and four, 3.47 and one save. Be facing two switch hitters in Wilson and Washington, followed by lefty Brett and righty Wathen. I'm sorry, righty McCray. So let's see how they want to play this. They could pinch hit for somebody there, but top of the order, I guess you're going to let those guys hit. So Frazier is on to start the eighth in a 5-3 Yankee lead. Start the bottom of the eighth with Willie Wilson, who is 0 for 3 and has yet to get the ball out of the infield, but that was batting right-handed. Let's see how he does batting left-handed. 5-8, switch hitter 5-8. It's a fly to left. He got the ball out of the infield, but it isn't out. And there's one away for UL Washington. So UL steps to the plate now. They could pinch hit for UL, despite the fact they had a home run last time, because now he's facing a right-hander. So they're going to pull UL Washington. And let's see who they're going to bring in. They're going to bring in Cesar Geronimo to pinch hit for him, and then they're going to have Onyx Concepcion coming in and play shortstop. So the wheels are turning in the Royal dugout. It will be... Geronimo coming on to hit. He will pinch hit. And then Concepcion comes in and plays short with a 3E42 rating. But right now, they're more interested in Cesar Geronimo, the pinch hitter. And Geronimo, 269 on the 82 season. But he's in there because he's can hit righties pretty well, so we'll see how he does against George Frazier. Trying to get something started for the Royals as they trail it 5-3. to three. Got to have someone on base so the tying run can come to the plate. It's a 5-6 against a lefty. It's ground ball to second. Willie Randolph is there. Two down, so Geronimo fails. Here's George Brett. 3-7 for Brett. That's a walk, and that'll bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Hal McRae. And Goose Gossage is loosening. Do they let Frazier keep going? Or do they bring in Gossage for a four-out save, which, of course, in 82 was definitely nothing out of the ordinary? And I think we've answered our own question. The Goose is going to be loose. So Goose Gossage is going to come on here with two outs in the eighth inning, take over for George Frazier, and try to close the deal for the Yankees. In 1982, Goose Gossage, 4-5, a 2-2-3 two, two, ERA and 30 saves. So he's definitely capable of 
getting the job done. We shall see. Hal McRae the batter. You're not going to pinch hit for Hal McRae. So nothing for Goose. Brett at first and two down. Brett, Brett will, let's see, Brett will be held. So here's McRae against Gossage. 1-4. And that's a ballpark single check. That's a 19, though. It's only a 16 for the single check, so it's going to be a line out to short. And that's going to end the inning. So Gossage gets out of that eighth inning situation. And we go to the ninth. Still a 5-3 to three game. Let's see what the Royals want to do. Do they bring in Quisenberry to keep the game close? or do you, I think they're going to stick with Armstrong. He's faced six batters and gotten five of them out. So he's still got no problem with his stamina. So they're going to keep him in there. And they'll be facing Rick Cerrone to start the ninth. 5-8. And that's a ground ball second base X. That is Frank White. He is a 1-E20. So we don't need the D20 with nobody on base. We know he's going to get to it. That's a 13, so an E, let's see, E20, let's see, Frank White, E20, and a 13. E20, there is a 13, so unfortunately for the Royals, E20 and a 13 is a one base error. So E4, not a good way to start the ninth inning. You can't blame Armstrong for that. He, he induced the ground ball, but just didn't work for him. So here's Andre Robertson. He's, he's going to try to bunt again. Remember last time he was a debunter, but somehow coaxed a good bunt? He's going to try it again. See if he can do it one more time. With a bunt chance. This one's a nine. So a debunter and a nine. Let's see how that plays out. Debunter is a nine, is a one and two. So that means one ball, two strike count. Does he try to bunt again? He will. That's a ten. So a D bunter and a 10 is bad. And bad says batter lays down a bad bunt, lead runner is thrown out by the fielder. So that's a three, which means the fielder is the catcher. So in this case, John Wathen pounced out there and threw to second base to get the force on Cerrone, goes two to six on the fielder's choice. So Robertson's the runner at first, he will not be held. And that brings up Willie Randolph. Two, chance for a balk or a pass or a pass ball. We're checking balk, and Armstrong's got a balk rating of three. No balk. So bring up Randolph. Three, three for Randolph. Ground ball, third base B. Another fielder's choice as Brett goes to White for the force play. Two down, and but this time Willie Randolph will be held, and that'll bring up Lee Mazzilli. Nothing on the havoc. 1-3 for Mazzilli is a single to left field. There's a clutch, but the runner is not in scoring position, so the single will stand. Base hit to left field. And Randolph will hold, I think. Let's double check. He was being held, makes him a 15. Yeah, the, with the ball hit to left field, he's going to stand pat. With two outs, he's already in scoring position at second base, so there's no sense doing anything there. Here's Griffey. Now, here's the question. Do you bring a lefty to face Griffey or let Armstrong face Griffey and try to get out of it? Who they have in the bullpen that's lefty is Don Hood. And that's where they're going. They're going with Don Hood. So Don Hood will be coming in as they make the call to the bullpen. It'll be Don Hood. Don Hood. And I think Dick Hauser is the manager of the Royals at this particular point in time. I didn't look it up, but I think he is. But whoever the manager is, he's making the call to the bullpen for Don Hood to get a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup with Ken Griffey. This is the only batter Hood's going to face. If he doesn't get Griffey, he's coming out of there. They're not going to let him face Winfield. So it's first and second with two down. First for the Havoc. Nothing happening. Here's Griffey against Hood. Lefty-on-lefty. 2-6. Lefty. That's a single to center, but it's a clutch. Runner is in scoring position. There are two outs. So that clutch single now turns into an out. So I don't remember if it's a fly out or a pop out. I think it's a pop out to second. Not that it matters. Doesn't really matter. The outs and the out, that's all that counts. So Griffey fails in the clutch and Hood gets the job done. Keeps the Yankees off the board. Keeps it a two run game. And, but they still gotta get two runs off of the goose. And for the Royals, it'll be Wathen, White, and Martin, but let's look who they have on the bench remaining. 
They've used a couple of players already. They've used Geronimo. They've used Otis. So they do have Jamie Quirk on the bench. He's only a 231 hitter. Hammond's a 230 hitter. Uh, Slot is 278. So they got three guys left on the bench. One righty, Slot, and two lefties there. So we look at the lineup and see who they might pinch hit for. I don't see anybody on here that's that they're better than. So I think I think we'll just have the Royals keep their standard lineup in there. There's nobody there to pinch hit for that I can see. So they're going to stick with who they got. Trailing it five to three, bottom of the ninth. Goss is trying to lock it down for the Yankees and hold on to first place. Or, or actually, they would tie the Red Sox, depending on what the Red Sox do in their game. They would tie the Red Sox with a record of 75 and 58 if they can get the win. And of course, the Royals with a loss would drop to six games back of the White Sox, and that would really be detrimental to their playoff hopes. Gossage to Wathen, 4 7, struck him out. Gossage with the whiff. Here's Frank White. 2-5 for White. That's a single to right field, so the tying run is at the plate, and that's pretty much all you can ask for if you're the Royals. White will be held, but he's not down two. You're not going to try to steal. Not Definitely not going to try to go anywhere. Uh, Gossage, as far as hold, pitcher holding, it's a minus one on him because he's got a minus one and Cerrone's a zero, so it's a minus one. So that just makes it even worse where you're not going to try to run. But he will be held. So here's Jerry Martin. See what he could do. 6-7 against Gossage. Struck him out. So it's two down, and it's all up to Lee May, the new first baseman. Came in and pinch hit for Willie Akins earlier when they were facing a lefty, but now he's got to deal with Gossage. Lee May to Gossage. Two veterans going at it. 3-6. Lee May comes through with a triple. Do you believe that? Lee May just tripled. A 1 to 10 is a triple. That's a 4. Lee May just tripled. And that cuts the lead to 5 to 4. Here in the bottom of the ninth is the Yankees. Goose Gossage starting to feel the heat a little bit. And now it's all up to Amos Otis to keep it going. Try to get this game tied up. Amos Otis, he was a 286 hitter, so you're not going to take him out with the people they have on the bench. You're going to keep him there. A wild pitch can also tie the game. Nope, no wild pitch there to worry about. So it's all on the line here. 5-4, bottom of the ninth, two outs. Amos Otis, runner Lee May is at third. Gossage to Otis. 4-10. Ballpark single check. That's a four. He's a 16. That's a base hit. Base hit, and we got a tie game. Tie game at five. Goose Gossage has just blown the save. And Amos Otis may have saved the Royal season right there. Keeps the game going. We are tied at five. Amos Otis will be held. He won't try to go anywhere. And here's Willie Wilson. So Goose Gossage blowing the save. And now let's see what happens here. Willie Wilson, the batter. Five, eight, and that's a strikeout to end the inning, but too little too late. Two runs for the Royals in the ninth. We go to the tenth. Free baseball here on the game of the week. Free baseball in the game of the week, and hopefully this is much better than last week's game of the week that uh, had some trouble uploading, and it took longer than the normal 2 o'clock start to get it uploaded for me. So hopefully this one's going to upload on time. I'm playing this one plenty of time to get it uploaded. Last week I played the game on Friday night, and just for whatever reason, YouTube didn't want to upload it fast enough for me, so that's what held that back late. All right, now Don Hood's out of there. He don't. He was there to face one batter. That was it. So now Dan Quisenberry's coming in for the Yankee for the uh, Royals, rather. The quiz. Dan Quisenberry is now on for the Royals. Dan Quisenberry, and on the '82 season, nine and seven, two five seven ERA, and thirty five saves, one hundred thirty seven innings pitched. So he's definitely a, can go multiple innings for sure. And Winfield will lead it off here in the top of the 10th against Quisenberry. Tied at 5. Royals were once down 5-1. to one, Going to the 7th inning stretch. Came back with 2 in the 7th and 2 in the 9th to tie it. 5-4 off of Quisenberry. Ground ball third base X. That's George Brett. He's a 2. E21. 2 and a 13 is good. E21 and an 11. 
E21 and an 11. And that's an error. That's I thought that 11 was, was a bad number. E21 and 11 is an error on George Brett. So E5, E5, second error of the game for the Royals. I think the Yankees, did they make an error? Yankees have not made an error. So the both errors belong to the Royals in this one. So leadoff error. Winfield will be held, but he won't go anywhere. And here is Lou Pinella. Nothing on that. Here's Quisenberry to Pinella. 6-6, six, six, and that's a ground ball shortstop B, fielder's choice. 6-4. to four. And now Pinella, new runner, and he will not be held at first. Here's Jerry Mumphrey, center fielder. Quisenberry to Mumphrey. 2-4 from Mumphrey. 1-10 to ten to home run. That is gone. Jerry Mumphrey, a two-run homer off of the quiz. Of course, it was off his own card, so the quiz had nothing to do with it. But it's a two-run bomb for Jerry Mumphrey. And the Yankees reclaim the lead now 7-5 to five here in the 10th inning. 7-5 to five Yankees. Jerry Mumphrey, not exactly a guy you think of home runs. He had nine home runs on the season. In fact, he had more triples than he had home runs. But he went deep there. Here's Roy Smalley. 6-5, switch hitter batting left-handed. 6-5 is a fly to left, two down. But the air kind of left the bubble here at Royal Stadium after that home run. They went through all that trouble to get back in the game and send it to extra innings, only to have Mumphrey go a two-run job on him here in the top of the 10th. 1-7 to Cerrone, flies to right to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the 10th. And I think with Goss, they're going to pull Gossage Goss is going to leave. And the Yankees will have to go to somebody else to try to close the deal. They've already used Frazier and Gossage. So who are they going to go to now? They're going to go to, I believe, Dave LaRoche. Yep, they're going to go to Dave LaRoche. 4-2, 3.42 ERA. No saves on the season, but of course he's been a closer in the past. So he's definitely not unfamiliar with that kind of role. So Dave LaRoche is on. Try to close the deal. He'll be facing Onyx Concepcion to start the get inning. He is the shortstop, and I don't know if they pinch hit for him if they have anybody else to play shortstop after this. Because Pryor is out of the game and Washington's out of the game. I don't think they have anybody else that can play shortstop. So if they pinch hit for him and the game happened to go another inning, they would have no shortstop. So... You're going to stick with Concepcion. He was a 234 hitter, so maybe he can get on somehow against the lefties. He's got a decent column against the lefties. We'll see. LaRoche facing Concepcion. Get a 5-4. And that's a ballpark single check, So, but that's a 20. How about that? A 1-19 on a ballpark, a 1-16 on a ballpark single check, and you roll a 20. That's the way it's going for Onyx Concepcion. So instead of a single, it'll just be a line out to short. And there's one away. So it looked like it was going to be a, a, a single. Took care of that. Don't know why Geronimo should have moved earlier. He pinch hit and should be not even in there. So now we got up to George Brett, followed by McCray. So they got the heart of the order coming up. The two guys you really want for the Royals, they're there. They just have to get it done. Brett, 0 for 3, three strikeouts and a walk is yet to put bat on ball. This, however, will be his first at bat against Dave LaRoche. So maybe he has better luck against him. 2-5. That's a walk, so he didn't get a base hit, but he did get a board. Does bring the tying run to the plate in Hal McRae. And, of course, Brett will Brett uh, will be held, but he won't go anywhere. LaRoche to McRae. McRae, one for four. 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight is a line out to third, snagged at third base by Roy Smalley. Two down. And that's going to bring up John Wathen. Last chance for the Royals is John Wathen. See what he can do against LaRoche. He's got a good column one. If he can find it. No, he found LaRoche's card. 5-10. That's a fly ball to right and hauled in out there by Ken Griffey. And the ball game is over. So the Yankees survive blowing the lead and win it by the score of 7-5 over the Royals. How about that? Player of the game ends up being Jerry Mumphrey. His two-run homer in the top of the 10th was the difference. And we'll look at the totals for the game. Hits for both teams. Let's see. One, two, three.
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits for the Yankees. So they go seven, nine, and O oh for the Yankees. For the Royals, they didn't get a hit till the fifth inning. So they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hits. So unofficially, the Yankees do re repeat history. They won the game in real life 3-2. to two. They win this game 7-5. to five. Seven runs, nine hits, no errors for the Yankees. Five runs, eight hits, and two errors for the Royals. Winning pitcher, oddly enough, or ironically enough, was Goose Gossage. He got the win, despite blowing the save. Dan Quisenberry takes the loss, and the save goes to Dave LaRoche. So that's going to do it from here. Next week, next Saturday, we will be at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. It'll be the Montreal Expos taking on the Chicago Cubs. Scott Sanderson against Randy Martz. That'll be the game of the week next week on the 11th. But from here, from Royal Stadium in Kansas City, the Yankees do it to the Royals again. Shades of 77 and 78. They do it to them again and take the victory 7-5. to five. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of NBC Stratomatic Game of the Week. Till next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.